Good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees, Smith Vocational Agricultural High School. Today is Tuesday, April 9th. May I have a call to order? Mr. Canley? Present. Mr. Quadro? Soon to be here. Dr. Spencer Robinson? Here. Mayor Ciara? Anticipated to come. Dr. Bonner? Here. Okay. May we stand for the report of everything? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The mission of Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School is to prepare students for social responsibility, employment, and post-secondary education through rigorous applied technical and academic programs. Thank you. You're welcome. We are moving the agenda around this evening, and at this time I would like to make a motion to have the second and to approve the FY25 budget. Motion to approve the fiscal year 2025 budget. Second. Thank you. Why was the order of the agenda changed? Because Ms. Quadro has to read. A uh, previous engagement that I asked for uh, that was scheduled way before this meeting was changed, and we had this discussion at our last board of trustees meeting. So. We will have our superintendent. Yes. Thank you, board. Um, so this presentation we've now seen a couple of times. I'm going to skip through most of what you've seen several times by now. Uh, as you recall, last month, we talked about some of the revenue sources. Uh, we talked about the uh, proposed non-resident tuition rate. We looked at some of the expenses uh, at that point. We were looking at about $162,000 uh, shortfall as of the last meeting. Uh, since that time, uh, I, I want to thank Chris <coughs> and, and the entire administrative team. Uh, just taking the opportunity to go through the budget uh, line by line, uh, really throwing a lot of things against the wall uh, to see uh, what would make the most sense in a difficult budget season. Uh, so. Well, I had this evening the following slides. I probably will skip through many of them. Again, they haven't changed specifically on the revenue side. Uh, we are not increasing revenue uh, with this new budget. Uh, we are still uh, going to budget the same number of non-resident students that we were originally budgeting for. Uh, as of a few hours ago, we did get confirmation from the state that the non-resident tuition rate that we were using for the calculations is actually the non-resident tuition rate. So that was some good news. Um, at least it didn't go down. Um, so anyways, uh, so all of that sort of stayed the same. I, I am uh, happy to present a difficult budget, uh, but a budget that uh, did not include any staff cuts. Uh, so we were talking about that as we go through. Uh, there were some lines that we had to make some difficult decisions and, and discussions to cut back on. Uh, as you already know, the budget you looked at last month, we were very tight already on instructional supplies. Uh, so we had to you know, think outside the box and be a little creative, but uh, we do have a budget this evening that I am uh, confident that we can meet for next year. Uh, our students will be served, and uh, just as importantly, individuals without losing jobs. Uh, so without further ado, I'll, I'll go through a couple slides. I think tonight I just want to go more through the budget to make sure that as a board you're, you're familiar with the budget, and uh, I can highlight a few areas that we, we cut back on from last month to, to this month to make it work. So as I already said, really the tuition side, the, the income side hasn't changed. Uh, we're looking at about a 3.84% increase in the non-business tuition rate. The overall budget, and I look at that $14 million, uh, that's not considered the units number uh, that we will share with the city. But the $14 million includes uh, our Schedule 19, all the indirect costs, uh, some of the grants, so on and so forth. Uh, but the actual munis number that goes to the city council uh, is actually 11306817 So that's technically uh, the, the balanced budget that will be going to city, uh, city council and the mayor. We use the $14 million because it's, it's truly more of a realistic number of what 
what it does cost to, to support the school year. And again, using that number that, as a benchmark, that $14 million is a 3.86% increase from the current fiscal year. I mentioned this last month. I think this is just important to remind the board uh, that that 3.86% is a, the larger perspective. And again, this is sort of a small sample size, but there was a survey that was going around the state. 96, uh, 93 districts responded to that particular survey. Uh, the average increase for those particular school districts that did respond was a 5.10% increase. Uh, the range was from 0.64%, so basically a level funded budget, all the way up to just shy of 13% increase. Uh, if you pull out the CTE schools that had responded, you know, their average was 4.78% increase. Uh, so our 3.86 is slightly below the state average of the respondents. It is slightly below the average of the CTE schools that responded. Uh, so to say that we have a tight budget is an understatement. I will, I will say that for the record, but uh, we are making it work for this year. Uh, I've already mentioned the tuition rate is going up 3.84%. Non-resident students, uh, if you looked at the enrollment trends, uh, we can anticipate somewhere in the ballpark of 17 additional non-resident students uh, from this year to next. Uh, but we're making a balanced budget work by including eight additional non-resident students on the revenue side for the budget. Uh, and as a reminder, we have to always set aside money uh, in the, the non-resident tuition rate, uh, the tuition account, revolving account, I'm sorry. Uh, to cover the transportation contract for the North Hampton students. So we always have, always have to set aside some of that money. So the point is, with the additional non-resident students that we hope to anticipate next year, there is no buffer. And you know, I've talked in the past, uh, we've, we've always wanted to have a buffer. Uh, God forbid, uh, you know, the students don't show up on the first day of school, and, and the city has to back the budget. So uh, there's not much of a buffer this year, to be honest. Uh, so if anything does happen, you know, we're going to dip into tuition revolving, uh, which actually happened this fiscal year when uh, we didn't have the students to cover the, the transportation costs. So it, it meant we had to dip more into tuition revolving. revolving. Uh, so that's, so, a, that's so a possibility. We're projecting 17, an increase of 17 non resident students. It, the, the income, the revenue from eight of those is going to the operating budget, and the income from 8.17 is going to tuition revolving. Ideally. Yeah, to pay for. Is our transportation, is it $86,000 a year? So we pay for two buses? Yeah. Um, so it's the ones 107 thousand divided by two. Okay, yeah. And again, as a reminder, the 170, as Crystal just mentioned, is down from 187 from this current fiscal year. And uh, it went down not because busing is getting cheaper, uh, but it's, we have less uh, transportation requirements as far as uh, some of the maintenance. So there's a savings there. Excuse me, Superintendent. So is, uh, that survey, was that free in the access? I will find the survey and send it to you. Okay. Um, I want to say it came from the, uh, I think I got it from the collaborative, I believe. Don't worry. Okay. I'll find it and I'll send it to you. Thank you. It's very useful. <clears throat> I'm not going to dive back into net school spending. I think we talked about that last week. Uh, I do want to, unless you write last meeting, uh, I do want to again highlight and, and thank the mayor and Superintendent Bonner. I think that was a wonderful uh, presentation uh, with the Northampton School Committee and, and uh, MAAC. So I learned a lot when I was at that particular session on what's happening in Northampton. And I think it was a great refresher course on the state funding. So great job. So the next couple of slides I, I did uh, highlight last month, I want to go through these. I think this is going to give you sort of the bird's eye view of the budget. Uh, last month, I, I looked at cost centers that had a, uh, an increase or a decrease of 5%. I'm going with 4% this evening because, again, the overall increase of the budget was just, was just shy of 4%. So I thought if there's anything going above the average or below the average, it might be worth at least a discussion. Okay, A lot of these were already on the report last month. So trustees, uh, again, we talked about last month, uh, it looks like it's a big increase, a 15.5% increase. That's mostly because of the, uh, the, the increased stipends for the trustees. Uh, but that's actually actually a lower percent increase from last month. You know, we're looking at a, a dollar figure of an increase of about $8,600. We found savings there, uh, and this was one of our uh, cutbacks from last month to this month. Uh, as we know, Ms. Carver is retiring. Uh, unfortunately, so you know, looking at her replacement, 
the board secretary line uh, falls under the trustees cost center. Uh, so we are looking at moving to a per meeting, per month stipend uh, for that individual. Uh, and in doing that, that would be a cost savings uh, compared to the current model. Uh, so that's how we draw some savings to that particular cost savings. And would that be one of our secretaries who currently works for the district who would be eligible for that stipend? Anybody would be eligible. Anybody. It could be the superintendent, secretary, replacement could be just an, an additional for that individual. It could be we're open to that. Okay. But we would expect it to be the superintendent, secretary, replacement. That's a fair assumption. No guarantees. Um, other district admin uh, went down. Um, I'll talk more. I have more notes. I'm get into the details. But uh, curriculum expenditures went up just just north of four percent. The teacher salaries, like Debbie, we talked about this last month. There was no change from last <coughs> month. To, this month, so even though it's a five percent increase, it is the biggest dollar increase in the budget, and I think that's no matter what school district you're working in, your teachers have the, the biggest chunk of the pie. Teachers and specialists just over four percent increase. Substitutes went down, and as a reminder, that went down because uh, through uh, the act of attrition, uh, we have a long-term sub educational associate uh, who is leaving. Uh, we are not replacing that position, so we're having the cost savings there. However, by saving there. We have to uh, increase the daily sub amount because we'll have to have more daily subs obviously available. So uh, while we're saving on the personnel side, we're increasing on the daily sub rate, but overall there's a savings in that particular cost center. That one makes me nervous because I think it's so great to have a sub um, on, you know, that you can count on every day because I know it can be hard to get subs. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I want to see what our experience is. Next year, <coughs> if we're able to get the replacements that we need. Right. Uh, paraprofessionals, again, it looks like there's a big increase of 57, almost a 58% increase. You see the dollar figure. We are not adding additional paraprofessionals. Uh, we're simply, we had to take, uh, I think it was at least one uh, out of one of the grants and move into the operating budget. So that's why you see the increase there. Uh, but no additional staff. <coughs> Staff PD uh, was a, a slight increase. Uh, that's just to ensure that we're you know, meeting the needs that we have for our staff professional development. General supplies, we cut back. Uh, this was a change from last month to, to this month. Um, and this is typically copy paper. Uh, so there's one area that we're going to probably be a little tight on, uh, but we'll do our best to manage that throughout the year. Dues and memberships, uh, I want to thank Joe and, and Crystal really going line by line and looking at past expenses. Uh, that looks like a large decrease, almost 25%. It's a $4,000 savings. Other instructional uh, hardware, this was a change from last month to this month. But again, it looks like it's a huge decrease, and, and how can we be cutting our technology budget? Uh, in reality, this is one less smart board that we'll, we'll purchase for the next school year. Uh, so rather than purchasing two, we'll purchase one. Got us a social work increase. Uh, nothing changed from last month to this month there. Student activities, uh, a slight increase uh, overall, uh, but that is one area. Uh, if you look at that particular cost center last month compared to now, uh, we did cut some areas in there, which I'll detail uh, in a little while. Custodial, same thing. You see an increase of about 4.5%. It's about 33000 uh, but it was much higher uh, last month, and uh, I'll highlight some of those savings uh, when we get into the budget. Heating utilities, nothing changed. Uh, unfortunately, just cost of oper operations are going up. Maintenance of grounds, it looks like a big cut, 43%. Uh, I can explain uh, that was some decisions that we made over the last couple of weeks uh, to come up with that money. Security, same thing I'll outline. Uh, it's a 20% decrease, it's $3,000. Uh, we looked at, uh, thank you to the city, uh, with the city's getting some new radios uh, citywide. Uh, we are lucky enough to inherit some of those new radios, so we think we can save on some radio replacement for the school by moving in that direction. And lastly, maintenance of equipment uh, is an increase, uh, and I think that's just the cost of maintaining some older buildings. So with that said, if you have your budget, I know it was in the packets, I think it was emailed out as well, uh, just to kind of orient the board, uh, the first page, what we call the revenue page, well, we always do a two-year comparison. It's the current fiscal year on the left, the proposed budget on the right. Uh, 
you can see how the numbers come out to come up with the revenue that we have. So the 453 non-resident students that we're budgeting, as you see, that's a plus eight from the current year. And then you can look at the math uh, row by row. Uh, any questions with the revenue? This did not change from last month. No. So if you move into the, the, the actual budget, the expenses, that's the next several pages, nine pages worth, I believe. Uh, I'll just go cost center by cost center. Uh, I'll highlight maybe some changes and points of reference if there's any questions from the board, by all means. Uh, but that first cost center is the school committee expense. Uh, I've already mentioned the, the replacement of uh, Ms. Carver. That's that very first line. That's why you see a decrease from 10000 down to 5192 Okay, so that's how we found some of that over the last few weeks. Beyond that, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Not a whole lot of change there in the school community expense. On the superintendent, the other change would obviously be in um, the second row, that's salary clerical. That is the Miss Carver, it's Miss Carver and Miss Carver's replacement. And uh, the, the change that we had from last month to this month to find some more savings there is that uh, Miss Carver will be retiring in September. Ideally, before any of this sort of became reality of, of difficult budgets, you know, I was hoping to have a, a, a new person on board, hypothetically July 1. Uh, we are now looking at a September 1 start date. So there will be less overlap, uh, so there will be a cost savings there. Beyond that, not a whole lot of change uh, in that particular cost center. Other district admin. So this was a change from last month to save some money uh, under public relations. And we have been budgeting 20000 a year for various public relations costs. You know, we're cutting it down to 12000 uh, And we still feel comfortable as an administrative team that 12000 will cover the needs that we have to make sure that we're getting the school's name out there and getting the students that we need to fill the slots. So. Is, uh, who, who is the primary recipients of that? Is it WWLP? We moved away. Uh, when I first came to Smith, and in my first year or two as superintendent, we had a contract with WLP. Uh, when we started analyzing the cost and what they were giving us for the services, we could do in-house for the most part, so we moved away from them. Uh, so it was about $7,500, I believe, for that, that particular contract. Most of the services were put down social media, pushing out through social media. Uh, I think we have a great presence already on social media. Uh, we, we spend very little money, uh, and we can do ads through uh, Facebook directly, so we save a lot of money there. Uh, the movie theaters, uh, I want to thank. Um, so is that our main, would you say? Main? main. Uh, the other one is we have to purchase mailing labels. Uh, <coughs> we use a marketing firm, uh, and we, we pop in the demographics that we want, they give us a mailing label so we can mail that to all families in the city communities that we want. Incoming ninth graders. Correct. Uh, and the associated cost of the postcard printing and whatnot. Uh, we also use that particular line for any public relations, not necessarily PR marketing. It would be more, you know, when we bring outside individuals like campus for lunch, tours, uh, coffee mugs, you know, all of that, you know, comes down this particular line. Thank you. Beyond that, not a whole lot of change. And again, I would welcome Mr. Bianco or Ms. Fairman if I forget something. Kick me to the table. Uh, the next cost center is business and finance. Really not a whole lot of change there uh, from the current year to the next. Well, one thing, well, I get on. a nickel and dime. Yep. Uh, assistant business manager, 75 to zero. You want to explain that? We didn't lose anybody. We didn't add anybody. But. We were looking to make an assistant business manager um, that would be able to assess me on more daily tasks. Um, and then we reduced one of the permanent positions out of last year's budget. We didn't move forward with it. We just kept everything as um, status quo. And the line above is our business manager. Uh, we, we are nickeling diming a little bit. Uh, There's a conversation we had within the administrative team as one example. Uh, you look at the superintendent's cost center, you look at the business and finance cost center, they both have, as an example, uh, office supplies. Well, we share the same office building. We have the same storage closet. So, is there a way to sort of cost share and cut back? I mean, we're talking just a few hundred dollars here and there, but it adds up. I just want to just yeah. try to highlight to the, the board that. We have a third line in that category. How many more points in five? It's a staff in the business office. 
So we're we, we we're increasing it from this year to next. The, yeah. Where it goes from forty-eight thousand five hundred forty-seven. No, because we had taken one of the salaries and put it in the assistant business manager. So if you look at uh, last year, what we had budgeted, and you'll see the decrease. So we were going to shift personnel originally. That's mm -hmm. what the seventy-five okay. accounted for. Yeah. So when it wasn't hired, it shifts back to the existing personnel only. So that gotcha. that's how they were making room for the assistant business manager was to repurpose a position. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're just reallocating it to a different no line. Line. Different, line. different line. people. Right. Right. Same people, different yeah. line. Okay. <clears throat> Human resources, really no change. Legal, no change. On page two, um, legal. Um, so we allocate 30, and do we generally end up spending the 30 each year? Depending on the year. Uh, negotiating years, yes. Yes, yeah, okay. negotiating years. So so this coming year, no negotiations. This coming year will be negotiation community. Okay. So, so is every year, is there ever a year we don't have negotiations? Or is there always something? There's always something, but the typically the third year oftentimes would be less because it'd be non bargaining units at that point. Okay. Thank you. The next task center is the, uh, it's called curriculum expenditures. Uh, so we have our special ed director salary. We have our director of academics and director of CTE salaries and all of their expenses to support them. Uh, really no major changes in that particular cost center. Next cost center is all the department heads. Uh, there's no change there. Next cost center is the principal's cost center. And really the only changes here from last month to, to this evening, uh, if you look at graduation, there's a slight decrease there. Uh, I will let the board know that there won't be any flowers slash the boutonnieres that you know, <laughs> oftentimes staff will wear at graduation. I'm sorry if you will look forward to that boutonniere. It's not happening. Um, so that will save us some money. Uh, Beyond that, I don't think there was any other savings in this particular line from last month. Uh, do it. So. Three penny counts, right? It, it does. Right. Building technology, uh, we no changes from last <coughs> month to this evening. Next is all the teacher salaries and, and whatnot. Um, I say whatnot, we're talking curriculum writing money, dual licenses, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, again, we're not cutting any, any personnel, so that cost center did not change. Why are they, um, why, what's the differentiation from line to line? So five, Departments. the FTEs, 554511, five, so are those our shops? Shops, academics, where each, says, each line is a different department. Where it says te South Technical, those are shop teachers, or no? It's both, they're both, yeah, that's just how, what Eunice calls Okay. All right. Uh, question on the, the headings here, FTE, full-time employee. The equivalent. So if you have a 0.5, that would be a, a half-time person, in essence. We don't really have half-times, but what you'll see would be you'd have to go, we have individuals uh, where their salary, which is an FTE, a full-time person, is split between two different cost centers. So you, you may see a 0.25 in one place and a 0.75 someplace else, or a one and a half and a 0.5, or whatever it happens to be. Other questions under the teachers? Dual license? More on the, on the academic side, if teachers have a second license that they're being used, uh, there's a benefit right. to have that second license. And so what is cut when when the numbers reduce? What is being cut? So it's when it's going from 14,400 to 9,600? The amount of teachers that we're using that dual license for. Okay. So what we budgeted for last year and what we actually need for this coming year is yeah. less than we need. Okay. Can you give us an example of a uh, dual license situation? 
Social sure. Studies English. Yeah, or Engineering Math, um, okay. but you'd have to be actually teaching both of those courses. Right. So um, it could be special education with English. So you're using both licenses to teach. Right. Right. So that helps us meet the criteria, the requirement to have licensed educators. And it probably makes it, um, it gives us more flexibility in terms of the courses that we can offer. Some, yes, some people can teach, and then it's also a recognition that you're burning time on that license, so you're going to have to give PDPs to replace it. So we want to be able to make sure that the teachers are, are you know, being recognized for using that license and they're not prepared for gotcha. reinvesting in themselves. So this money goes to the teachers yes, with teachers. the dual licenses? Correct. Okay, and so we're saying, so how? So, so you might teach, Yeah. you may teach four classes of history, Yeah. but you may also have an English license yeah. and you're teaching an English course. Yep. So you would get the compensation for the English course using your second license. Yeah, excellent. Um, so then what, how does it impact the educational experience when we're going from 14400 to... That's just getting closer to true cost of what we're using. Okay. Yeah. So, so we're not losing, we're not like saying, sorry, you have two licenses, but we don't get to... No, but as we, yeah, we may use it, but also as we've added staff over the years, mm -hmm. we're less likely to pull on it. Somebody with the licenses. Thank yep. you. Other questions under teachers? Next class enter teacher specialists. Uh, this is uh, special ed teachers uh, in an tutoring requirements. No major changes here. Next section, long-term subs, we have nothing there, so we can skip down to the next section, which is substitutes. I've already mentioned, as you see, you know, the 29,924 went to zero. Uh, that was the position to nutrition. And then we bumped up the daily sub, which is at 50,000, up to 60,000. Beyond that, no changes in that particular cost center. Going back to the tutoring, um, can you tell us what, uh, what are the most common reasons for a student to receive, uh, to be eligible for um, tutoring at home? So there I'm thinking three main buckets. One would be special ed service needs, whatever that would look like. One would be for medical reasons, somebody gets hurt, sick or whatever, we have to provide that tutoring. Or through discipline, uh, if we're excluding a, a student, uh, that student is still obligated to, to receive education services so that we tutor. Okay. And then with the first category, so there are students who can come to school but are eligible to be tutored at home? No. <laughs> no, it's really for students who have been hospitalized. Okay. Um, we put in place tutoring to help them re recover. Um, but typically 14 consecutive days hospitalized or homebound for medical kids, um, we are required to do tutoring. Um, but we do backfill to help kids catch up. Any other questions under the substitutes? There's one more on the tutoring. Is it our teachers that provide the tutoring or do we turn to outside folks? Our, our, first yeah, our first priority is our teachers. Yeah, when they're hospitalized, if they're hospitalized beyond 14 days, I sign a contract with the hospital because our teachers can't go into the hospital. But otherwise, it, it goes to our teachers. It's in their uh, collective bargaining agreement. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The next class up there is the professionals. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, uh, there's an increase there. It looks like it's a substantial increase. Again, no new staff, it's simply moving some staff that we had within one of the grants to the operating budget. So uh, that's why you see an increase in that particular cost center. Uh, just to be the question that we saw under longevity, you may say, you know, how is longevity going down if we didn't really change any uh, the staffing numbers? Uh, one thing I, I love to, to see here is Smith. Now, we had some vocational assistants who would have fallen under this particular cost center have become teachers. So they actually moved out of that particular cost center, now they're in the teacher's cost center. So uh, that would be one reason why longevity went down. Another one was uh, if a paraprofessional salary is being covered within the grant, the longevity has to be in the grant as well. Uh, so there's some shifting that happened there. Uh, 
so again, without losing people, uh, just to clarify why longevity actually went down. What does uh, G240 mean, and why? So it's zero in both columns, and... Um, it's a grant. It's a 240 grant. Okay. So what, what does that stand for? The IDEA. The IDEA. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And where's the grant from? That's the federal the grant federal for the for special ed. Right. Okay. Um, so <coughs> the grant is $130,000. No, that's what we... we we're um, budgeting to be paying out of the grant for those salaries. Okay. But there might also be testing. How come it says zero? Because it, there's nothing in the operating budget. That column that has 130 is the grant column. So, oh, so the four, the four paraprofessionals yes. are being paid with, for out of the grant, not out of the one third. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions in there? Uh, well, yeah, that brings up. Um, so, why isn't the grant money brought into the budget bucket? The operating budget. Oh, you, oh, you want to keep it separate. Yeah, you want to keep it separate. Okay. So, the operating budget is simply to account for uh, the Chapter 70 money, North Hampton money, and then the non resident tuition money coming in. So, that's what we would consider the operating budget, and then the grants are separate. So, the grants could be eventually, obviously, the the 240 grant, it would be Title I, Title II, so on and so forth. It could be Perkins. Uh, these are other grants that we have to support the operating of the mm -hmm. school, but they're outside the operating budget. Is that because the, because the amount of funding is not as reliable or predictable or consistent, potentially, or because there's a timeline to spend the money by the end of the period? It's kind of keeps its own category. I've never seen Yes, and it's accounting like purposes to mix your grant money into your operating budget doesn't make a lot of sense. You, yeah, you can't. We have different reports that we have to run for the grants. And um, certainly you want to keep the grants separate because you don't, um, a lot of the grants you can't wow. supplant. So you, again, you have to keep everything separate. Right. We have different cost centers and different funds from for the grants. And we're not, we're not paying for any of our um, salary employees with grant money. Only I'm seeing the here the Paris. The Paris. Paris. Right. Who I, I, uh, is that a salary? Is it, I thought they take anybody out. No. The, the new people. It did. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions about the Paris? Mm -hmm. The next cost center is the Library Media Center. Really no change there. And then the staff PD cost is the next cost center, as, as I mentioned earlier, the slight increase, just to make sure that we're meeting all the contractual obligations around PD. <clears throat> next cost center that spills over to page five are all the textbooks. And as you can see, we basically level, level funding that from the current fiscal year to the next. Can you tell us very briefly what the process is for um, consideration of and approval of um, funds for textbooks? Like does the funds or the approval of a new textbook? Um, so, no, the funds. So how, how, how does the allocation of the resources work? How, how is it determined? You want to walk through the ball? Sure. <clears throat> so all the departments look at the materials that they have and mm -hmm. they look at the amount of books that they have in inventory or they could have certain books that work books that are cyclical so like in electrical, they're buying new code books every three years or so, <clears throat> but they're also buying the workbooks every year. So those workbooks get given to the students, it remains to the student for four years, and they use it as a supplemental for right. their learning. So depending on the shop, depending on the classroom, we look at the, the requested books, what they have on inventory, why they're requesting them, and then we uh, do our best to meet all those. Everybody's requests. Yep. Great. And are ebooks um, part of these line items or are they in a different place? They'd be in this line item if they're applicable. And if, uh, if students need access to online resources that are, there's a fee for, that would also be in the textbooks part? If, it's, if it is a textbook, yeah, okay. it falls under the textbooks ideas versus software that's instructional, so yeah. it would be different. So, right. like automotive might have CDX, which is curriculum, yeah. quizzes, tests, videos, but that's going to fall in the software. In software and instructional. Gotcha. But if the book is offered, like maybe it's the math book and it has a supplemental ebook that students can use at home, yeah. 
they're going to get the code. It's just part of that cost. But in a lot of areas, we found that the ebooks are more expensive than regular books. A lot more. Uh, and, they, and on top of an additional fee they usually want, there's usually a yearly cost for because they're more treated like software. Yeah. Yeah. So what would, um, are most of the textbooks <clears throat> physical paper books, would you say? Yes. Okay. And that's teacher's preference? Is that like driven by teacher's preferences for cost or both? Uh, both. Oh. Yeah, primarily teacher preference. Okay. It's just, yeah. And do students um, take books uh, home with them and back again? Or do they typically stay there? Uh, it depends on the class, they'll take them back and forth. Thank you. Other questions? Next cost center is the instru uh, instructional materials for each of the departments in shops. And again, it's basically level funded. I already came with that home last month. Sorry, I have a question about textbooks. Looking at AgMAC, um, we uh, spent 7300 or approved 7300 last year and zero this year. Mm -hmm. Just quickly, why? Because they bought a bunch of instructional books like for John Deere and other mm -hmm. equipment yeah. that don't need to be replaced because now they're part of their gotcha. research encyclopedia. And so everything you need to know. Nope. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Again, uh, instructional materials, when you level fund that particular line, in essence, it's going to be a decrease uh, when you have costs of copper mm -hmm. and other materials going up. So uh, it's just a, a fact with this particular budget will be very tight in, in that area. Uh, some shops, you know, they have uh, revolving accounts, they're able to generate some revenue, which, which will help those particular shops. Other shops, they don't really have uh, a revolving account, it would be more difficult to, to manage their material. That's where we're at for this fiscal year. <clears throat> Questions on that, yeah. Councilor? Why is the second line grant funded? What is that? That's district-wide supplies. Okay. So in, in, in each individual grant, I took all of the amounts that were budgeted for this year for supplies, and I put that right there. Thank you. That's the 10000 you're referring to? Yeah. And that's typically safety glasses and OSHA. Is that how we cover it? No. No, OSHA's on a different one. This is, yeah, the safety glasses. So just to um, put a point on what you said, we're, these are um, physical materials that are needed, you know, largely in our shops, and we all know how the costs of everything have gone up, and we're looking at those numbers with barely an increase. A half a percent increase. So yeah. how are teachers going to manage? I guess I think that's a different. How do we expect teachers to manage? Do we say to them, Sorry. Well, some of the, some of these numbers are their numbers, so it's not like uh, you know, they came to me with requests. Okay. So about fifty percent of the numbers that you see on this paper, yeah. they said they didn't need more. Okay. So usually we have a high amount of uh, we're lucky. Uh, and they're and, and blessed that we have a high amount of donations that come in through industry partners. So yes. they're accounted for that. When they sat with us, uh, you know, take a uh, clear example would be advanced manufacturing. That's a true, true number that we got from the department head. So he looks at the amount of material, he multiplies it by the number of students. He has a formula that he goes through. He's taking into account the amount of material that he's going to have donated or has in the past. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to project forward. Okay. Um, so most of the most of the numbers that you see are are what was requested. Great. So we were able to, you know, they weren't. We're not imposing it on them. Correct. There were some that they were asking for much more, but there's no way we can give at this point. And they we may to, but... need to reach out to their industry associates for maybe a little more throughout the year in terms of donations. And, and during the advisory <coughs> meetings, uh, a lot of the people that are on our board will state that they'll try to help us when they can. Yeah, and, uh, and have in the past. Yeah, we've been very blessed. With a quick review of this, if you compare to this current fiscal year and then the projections for next year, none of the departments are receiving less. So that's a, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just a point of dis uh, distinction. Uh, when we talk about the farm, you know, what is the difference between managing the farm and providing instruction for our students in the animal science? Yeah. Uh, 
So you'll see that sort of black and white in the cost center. You see animal signs for 8,000. You see the farm at 62,500. So again, we try to differentiate uh, when there's materials that are needed to teach our students that comes out of that animal science line. Uh, but feed, as an example, is not instructional material for the students. The feed is to feed the animals. Uh, that comes out of that 16,000. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so, so the up. board's aware that we try to differentiate. Yeah. And we're on the lines where it says license slash um, certificate, am I mm -hmm. correct in thinking that the district is paying for students to be able to uh, achieve that license or that certificate, so they're leaving mm -hmm. school yes. with that yes. um, to go into the industry. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, moving on, page six. <coughs> Uh, I mentioned it in the, the presentation towards the top. It's that general supplies. You see the reduction there. It's basically our copy paper. General supplies, district wide. <coughs> the next big cost center is the other instructional cost center. You see a lot of dues and licenses and, and whatnot. Uh, this, so Dr. Spencer Robinson, you mentioned under the instructional supplies licenses, that's student centered licenses. This cost center gotcha. is more for the adults. Okay. Uh, depending on what department, sometimes they have to have uh, various professional licenses to, to maintain that position. That's where you see it. In the okay. class of it. Thank you. So when the when it's it's zero for this year, does that mean that they don't that they don't need to acquire the license? Okay. 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 Moving on, uh, the next one that's sort of a point of reference is the other instructional hardware. Uh, I already mentioned in the, in the presentation, you see it went from 7,500 down to 5,000 for this coming year. Again, that's, that's one less smart board. <clears throat> Moving on, you'll see uh, instructional software, our guidance areas, uh, not a whole lot of change there. At the bottom of page six, is our, our guidance social work area. Uh, this is just one example of uh, the very first row there, the salary supervision. Uh, Mr. Quadro, you were asking about FTE, you see a 0.5 there. Uh, this, again, it's not a, a half-time individual. Mm -hmm. That's one yep. individual who has half the salary covered there. Mm -hmm. Somewhere else. And that, just as a point, that's actually the co-op coordinator's, it's Mr. Lenore's salary. Mm -hmm. 0.5 is that the quad coordinator covered in this particular cost center. When you move to athletics, you'll see the other 0.5. Thank you. <clears throat> Next cost center is the psychological expenditures with our school psychologist. We no, no major changes. Moving down to medical, uh, this is our school nurse. And all of those expenses, really nothing. Uh, that point five, that would be a, it's our part-time nurse. That is a point five. That's a real point five. That's a real point five. <laughs> Full person, okay. but we only get half of it. Right. I got it. So can I, can I ask a question about, um, so after SPED testing and supplies, um, the line below that, the fiscal year 24 approved budget is 7.9 million fiscal year 25 proposed budget 8.3 million. What does that, uh, what do those numbers represent? So there's um, different cost centers that, so yeah. the first, right. so that's all academic. So that's totaling from, um, I believe it's So this is all of our teachers, all of our educators. Co correct. Anything that has to do with instruction. Yeah. And that's how we have to set up the account numbers as well. Yeah. So it follows, um, Desi has a formula that we're, we have to use. Right. So that's what um, the city auditor uses to right. set up um, the different accounts. And our, our total proposed budget is, how much is it? The mutus number is 11 million real six. Right. So yes, eight of the 11 million is directly yeah. to instruction. Um, and so the other three are administrators and supplies, and then in operations. Right, and then what's the? But our actual budget is 
14 million. I use 14 because that includes our the indirect costs yeah. uh, for the city and, and whatnot. Yeah. I, I just feel that's a more realistic yeah. sure, yeah. a school budget. Right, right. Of course. I'm just interested in the uh, educator proportion of the budget and wondering how it compares to other districts as a percentage of our overall budget. Yeah, just curious about it. Thank you. Oh, excuse me, sir. I'm going to have to excuse myself. But I'm previous to the <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. We've got a forum here, so we're all set. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions under the medical? The, the school nurse cost center? The next, I already had a prelude uh, to the athletic department. I mentioned the other 0.5. Again, it's just only a 1.0 FTE. Uh, one change that we have from last month to this month, actually two changes in this particular cost center. Uh, one is under what is called stipend. Uh, you see that this year we were budgeting 4320 uh, We are now proposing a budget of 2400 That is for the weight room, stipends to, to support our weight room throughout the year. In essence, what the 2400 will give us uh, is an, an adult who can monitor the weight room four days a week for tw uh, 20 weeks rather than 40 weeks. So basically how the athletic director wants to schedule that, that support, whether it's every other week or consecutive weeks depending on the season, uh, there's some flexibility, uh, flexibility there. Uh, but it's still a great resource for our students, but just trying to be more realistic. Uh, and then the other cutback that we had was, uh, with, again, within athletics, is the travel, the game buses. As you see, we, we cut back by 5,000. Um, We're walking to some our, our figures and those are crossed right, on that particular line, that we have enough busing available. Um, that's one that we are worried about. So, so anyways, those are the changes from last month to, to this evening. Next cost center, other student activities. As I mentioned, uh, the first line stipends, there is an increase there, but it's a decrease from last month. And uh, I, I want to thank Mr. Sabonis, who is the assistant principal who oversees the clubs and activities, and just doing a lot of research in student involvement. Thank you to Mr. Bianca for you know, reviewing all the data as well. Uh, there were a few clubs that have been really under-supported or underserved you know, from the students. Uh, lack of participation, probably a better way to say it. Uh, so we've decided to not budget those particular stipends for those particular advisors. But the number is bigger. This, the seconds go up according to the unit gain, the percentage. Gotcha. So, um, so we're paying the, the leaders more, but having fewer. Correct. Fewer leaders, correct. Okay. And then the second one that we cut back in that particular cost center is under assemblies. Uh, there was one particular activity that Mr. Bianca brought in a few years ago. Uh, great program, but again, it's one that we just felt when we have to find the money, we have to find it someplace. That's one particular activity that we, we cut back. Is, uh, is that something that we could ask NEF about? Might be. You know, kind of one shot community. Mm -hmm. And this is what we Yeah. It just seems really neat, like a nice thing. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Other questions under the student activities? Uh, we'll go on to page eight. This is where we begin to move into custodial and then a lot of the operations. Under custodial, this is on page eight. Some of the changes here from last month to this evening. Uh, probably about a third of the way down under the custodial expenses, you see stipends. You see an amount this year of 10000 Which page are we on? Page 8. Okay. Mm -hmm. And which category? Oh. It's under custodial expenses and stipends. Okay. You see this year is budgeted 10000 This coming year we're budgeting zero. So that's a decision that we've made over the last few weeks. Uh, that's a stipend for large equipment maintenance. Uh, so an individual received a $10,000 stipend uh, to do the regular maintenance on the equipment, mostly the farm equipment. Uh, we felt this was one area that we could cut back, uh, mostly because a lot of the equipment that we have is new, thank you to the Skills Capital Grants. Uh, so hopefully this, again, fingers and toes crossed, there may be less maintenance required, 
Uh, if there's still maintenance required, you know, we can look at what can we do in-house uh, within the shops and what do we have to contract out. Uh, so there was a savings there. The other big savings that we had, you don't see the, how we realize it here in the budget document, but the next row, the contract of services, you see there was nothing this fiscal year. We're budgeting 63000 as a change this coming year. Uh, when you look at this budget last month, that line was doubled. Um, so we cut it in half. Uh, this is the cleaning company contract. Uh, so we brought in the cleaning company. This was last school year or this? this, this year? Started, uh, last summer. Okay. Uh, and, and we've gotten nothing but positive feedback uh, from the cleaning company. Uh, the areas are clean. It's, it's, it's been an amazing improvement on our campus. Uh, what we were hoping for is to have that contract for two individuals. Uh, but again, when budget was tight, uh, so we decided to cut it back. So what you're looking at there is a contract for one individual who would be coming in uh, in the afternoons and evenings. And we just need to so we're not cutting it out totally, but just going from two to one. And what are we going to use now? Two people or one? Two, I believe. Two. Okay. And we don't want to, we, we would rather contract out than hire someone ourselves. Why? your savings on the, on the benefit side. So that contract, there's an hourly rate. And if you look at that hourly rate for that one individual, and there's no additional benefit costs, if we were to hire somebody, that one person, full time, plus all the benefits, it, this is the savings to the, the school. Do, do we think that person might not be having benefits? I can't comment on that, I don't know. But they would be put on paid for by the vendor, right? So something there's nothing that we have to cover. We pay for all the benefits. Maybe something to ask the vendor, because we want. I, I would want folks working at the school. To, but if they're if they're not our employee, we right. Right. But so we don't know what their benefits are. Right. And I'm saying I would like to. Know. I understand. Yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you. The other change uh, was towards the bottom of that cost that you see stipends. We had 10,000 this year. Uh, we're recommending 5,000. Uh, what you see there is uh, this was part of our attempt to revamp uh, the operations of the farm. Uh, we created two $5,000 stipends. Uh, we broke out our farm, our farm tech model into farm techs and animal care techs. Which part are we on? Sorry. We're still within the custodial expenses. Up at the top or? Towards the bottom. Okay. Right? The second from the bottom. Stipends. It was 10,000 this year. We're recommending 5,000. Okay. So the 10000 was two $5,000 stipends, one for a lead farm tech, one for the lead animal care tech. Uh, what we're recommending now is one $5,000 stipend, so it would be one individual overseeing basically four people. Uh, and, and really the responsibilities around that stipend uh, is scheduling uh, to ensure that the individuals are, are staffed correctly during the school day, school week. And then the rotation, figuring out the rotation of scheduling over the weekends and holidays. Uh, because again, the animals have to be cared for 24 7, not 24 7, but seven days a week. So that, that's a, a cut back there. I, I, couldn't go, I couldn't go beyond the natural gas line. Well, not there yet. Oh, okay. We're still up at the top one. I'm trying to explain the stipends, the 10,000. Okay, gotcha. 5, All right, sorry. I thought you were referring to that. All right, so stipends 10,000 to 5,000. Got it. All right. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, now moving on to natural gas. Um, the heat cost center. As I've been talking about the last few months, this is one area um, that's really out of our control. Um, so it's, it's a 50% increase in the cost of natural gas. Right. Wow. Overall, cost center is up to shy of 39%. Wow. And so that, that is strictly based on the rate that we're charged. We're not using more heat. I mean, winters are milder. Can we lock in our rate? I mean, we certainly probably do for oil, but what about the natural gas? Good question. Do you know the crystal? Or? So I, um, generally, I've worked with Chris Mason on this. And um, I'm sorry, You Mayor. did sign a new contract recently. I thought you said that last meeting. Mm -hmm. So you did. Um, the gas rate hasn't really changed all that much. The electricity rate. Um, mm -hmm. the electricity. Um, 
was was a better rate that we locked in. Gas hadn't really. It, it's actually expected to go up when we locked it in before it went up, but it's not that different. What percent increases are the North Indian public schools seeing with natural gas and electric? I cannot tell you that off the top of my head. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I would like to, but... Um, are they pretty big like this? Well, we're using the same rates that... Because yeah. um, we're on the city side, so whatever yeah. benefits that they okay. receive, we tap into the same. That's why I was just asking, yeah. were you taking advantage of the, the rates that were... Fixed, fixed rates mm -hmm. in terms of uh, bargaining with the company, making sure we're locked in. But the city, the city meant that for us. And the city, so. yes. And so, yeah. so whatever um, projections that uh, Smith is using, yeah, we're using the same. Same, yeah. But for a small district, those are big numbers. I mean, that's that's two, maybe two people, right? Two employees. But although us. this is one school. It is a huge campus and we have multiple right. buildings. Yeah. You know, so I mean, yeah. we have six buildings that are spread out. Right? Yes. Yeah. So it's you know, they're about seven, eight buildings. Mm -hmm. So it's you know, almost so pretty. Really. It's, yeah, it's quite you know, it's yeah. apples to apples. You yeah. know, still, even though it's just buildings, you still have to heat them and yeah. do whatever. I, it's something that I would like for the general public. As the, especially the general taxpaying public to understand that like cost increases like this, it's huge and, mm -hmm. and we don't have any control over it and it's not going to direct instruction, or, or, not part of the direct educational experience for, for students. It's uh, pretty frustrating. It's mm -hmm. the thing that's like health insurance. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Massive. Yeah. 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 part of the budget. Yeah, yeah. where your municipalities are having to carry the, those those burdens and it just mm -hmm. seems it's not an you know, ideal way. Yeah, but that that's just I. Think. <coughs> but I said from the last time that the climate action department is trying to look at efficiency, and I think we're having a conversation here yes. on how you know sometimes there are little changes that can make whether it's just like the thermostat are set to go down at a certain time, and they're off of a week. You know, there are things that sometimes can be adjusted that seem trivial, but actually have. And I know our facility director does that, take advantage of the software, so yeah. he can control it, and he does go down at night and with the equipment. Mm -hmm. And our windows are certainly going to help in the windows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow. All right. So that's our heat and utilities, yeah. and sort of the trailer to electricity. Same topic. Yeah. Everything's going up. So again, for those who don't see yeah. this, our heat power center is up 38, almost 39%. <coughs> utilities is up. 17 and three quarter percent. Natural gas 120 to 180 and elect electricity 150 to 200. Okay. Next cost center is the maintenance of grounds. Uh, this is a couple of areas that we, uh, from last month to this evening, we cut back. Uh, the first one is the R&M uh, ground, uh, cutting back $1,000. That's just looking at a contract with our uh, the seeding and, and fertilizer and whatnot to maintain some of those, our grounds, uh, cutting back on some of the treatment there. In the second <coughs> of the street, uh, that's a, a larger savings. Uh, in talking to the facilities director, we felt uh, that savings would be, at least for this year, uh, minimizing some of the, the maintenance and repairs that we would like to fully do for the back parking lot, for all the parking lots. So we'll just go one last year of, of that maintenance and, and repair. I have a question back up about the telephone line. I know that um, one negotiated benefit is um, cell phone reimbursement, but I also know obviously we have landlines here. Am I right in thinking that the landlines are the majority of the 16,000? Two, two different lines. So you same cost. <coughs> the telephone line that you're referring oh, to is 16,000. Oh, cell phones are there it is. Okay, it so is the landlines are the 16,000. Any other questions under maintenance of grounds? Uh, maintenance of buildings. It's disappointing to see it reduced from 25,000 to 14,000. I mean, our campus is beautiful and we take pride in it and to see that we're not able to spend as much money. On right, so the grounds keeping, that third row, which is level funded, uh, <laughs> that is our summer, the summer help uh, that we, we hire students typically. Okay. So there's still, we're doing everything we can to maintain yeah. the beauty of the campus. 
Can you say, you said this, but can you say it again? The R and M Street. That is the parking lot repairs that we normally go through. So we're not going to be able to do that. Correct, for the okay. most part. Yep. Oh, R and M repair maintenance. Yes. Okay. This is building's cost center. Uh, this is again. The facilities director has these lines. One example of plumbing and heating, another one's electrical. So any plumbing issues on campus, any electrical issues on campus, oftentimes our students are doing the work, but the material and supplies that our students need to have access to to fix the bathrooms or electric will come out of these particular lines. <coughs> So last page, page nine, the building security system, I already mentioned uh, during the presentation, you see that reduction in the supplies line, that 5,000 and the 2,000. Again, that was uh, hoping that we realize some savings with the new radio system from the city. Where are we? Top of page nine, yep. second expense supplies. This year we budgeted 5,000, we're recommending a budget of 2,000 for next, next oh, year. Oh, well, the R&M supply technique. I'm using a different question. Yeah, we're yeah. At the bottom of the. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I see. It's the bottom of page eight. Yes. Yeah, our right. building supply building screen system. Okay. Yeah, so it's down from 15 to 12. Overall, the overall cost of yeah. yes. Yes. That one expense line of supplies was really for the radios. Right. Can I just clarify? So we're not just buying new radios. So this is a this is a project that started way before I was mayor. It's been in process for many years. It is a, a completely new radio system because we had lots of locations where we couldn't be in touch with people, where the radio didn't work, including inside school buildings, of course, um, and out at the water treatment plant, places where there was just if there was an emergency, there'd be no communication. So this is a switch over so that everyone in the Sounds like a good plan. Okay. Now on to page nine. <clears throat> the maintenance of equipment. Really not a whole lot of change there. Extraordinary maintenance. And this is one, uh, we call this our unofficial in-house capital improvement. Um, particular, you want to have more money in there. Uh, from last month to, to this evening, that 96930 has been reduced. Uh, that's how we're making the, the, the budget work. Uh, it's slightly more than what we had this, this fiscal year. Uh, but again, we're coming to the realization, we talked about as a leadership team, we're beginning to talk to the faculty about it, where over the last seven years, you've seen in my previous presentation, all of the improvements that we've had on campus. You know, we're getting to the point now where those improvements are going to have to slow down. Uh, not that we're running out of projects, there's always plenty of projects to do, but uh, with the, the leveling of enrollment, there's just going to be less new money coming in, uh, and that's going to be one particular line that we're going to have, which obviously is a challenge. What, what is on that list for the increase in the theoretically, hypothetically right now? Yep, so we're trying to finalize, uh, we've been going through the campus, all the shops with new lockers, for uh, the student locker room areas in each of the shops. We have two shops left, I think, well, technically there's three, but we're budgeting two shops, I believe, right? Yeah, there's two partial shops and one full left. So try to finalize that. Uh, and then if you had, if you're tall, like me, you can see the top of the roof, you can see all the hood systems, uh, they're all original, they're rusting and decaying, and we just want to have some general maintenance to extend the life of the, all of the exhaust and hood systems up on the roof. If um, we wanted to look at air conditioning for B building, um, what would that process entail? Like, how, how would that be funded? This is probably not the right place because it's going to be much more than that. So that is on um, slated for FY26 um, capital plan. Awesome. And that's what we go to the city for. That's correct. Right. And about how much does that cost? Uh, it has to be under 150. So, okay. um, so not not. I mean, it's under 150. Tim Tim was able to secure a quote. Um, and, I'm, and I'm not sure. Um, it might go up a little bit. So that's where we might have to use some of the facilities revolving to cover that. Okay. So we're in 
the school, we're about to start the school year 25, oh, so, so they would have no, right, so they would have no AC in the next school year. Correct. And what about in the following one? Probably not then either, or maybe for the well, second part of the year? Generally, we don't find out about the capital plan until April, May. Mm -hmm. It's just past our Okay, so two, two more years without air conditioning. Well, they would let us know when we can start using the money once the capital plan is approved. Yeah. And they will, um, the city will also let us know when we can start using the funds. So would that be next April they would let us know about using the funds for the following year? Oh, okay. So, so in April, the, um, you know, the city auditor can um, say either you can start using the funds now or you have to wait till July 1. Gotcha. But in the meantime, we can start preparing, awesome. um, going out to bid, and okay. you know, you put the stipulation in there when it needs to be completed. And, oh, that would be so great to tell people to work there. It's hot. Mm -hmm. And so the, that would include cooling cool the gym. Why not? I'm glad you have that. Um, okay. That seems like a huge thing. I don't know what Tim. Yeah, that's exciting. I think right now those offices and classrooms. Okay, great. Fantastic. Such good news. Any other questions under that particular class center? No. Uh, really, the last one uh, I just want to point out would be the separation costs. Okay, you see it's zero. Uh, we've actually slid that over to tuition revolving. Uh, there was uh, just shy of thirteen thousand dollars worth of separation costs that. Uh, we're forecasting and, and we agreed to do this uh, there's precedent several years ago uh, where an individual was retiring there was a substantial separation cost and we agreed uh, to move that that one time over to tuition revolving um, so that's what we're, we're proposing this would be the process for this evening and that is retirement again correct okay and different from unemployment which is correct okay. unemployment you know we we're recommending we can cut back um, Again, but that's a wild card. It's difficult, but we're not forecasting a whole lot of unemployment at this point. Fingers crossed. Again, with a budget where we're not laying anybody off, mm -hmm. we think we can save on some of the unemployment. Yeah. Can you give an example of when somebody would be able to collect unemployment from um, part of this year? Like, what are the circumstances that would lead to that? <coughs> uh, I won't get into the coaching. I won't upset the experiment. Uh, but coaches, sometimes there's issues right, there. Right. Uh, but typically, uh, maybe. An easy example would be a, a newer teacher who is not renewed for whatever the reasons happen to be. That was in my mind. Okay. Uh, I think that's all I have on the, as far as expenses go. Um, so what you see this evening, again, as a reminder, summary, is a balanced budget. Besides that one caveat, no need to, to lean into tuition revolving. And, Maintaining staff positions. With that said, I'll open up any other questions or turn it back to the chair. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank everybody, Jill and Crystal and your staff for putting together a lot of hard work behind the scenes that nobody ever sees. So to make this happen in the middle of the spinal, we're going to give her balance budget. So, <clears throat> so, 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 I, I feel the wound. <laughs> <laughs> and that was not. Oh no! I didn't know you one bit. Yeah, and it's about getting your district to eight percent students from out of district. I hear, but it's still pain. <laughs> okay. So we have a motion and a second. I, I have a question for the superintendent. I just had a quick question, which is Amanda that better for your bottom line, but the indirect, how did you, the indirect increase looks low to me from 24 to 25? So, um, the city finance director gives me an estimate. Okay. Okay. I trust her about that. Um, how, how do you feel, uh, uh echo what, what, uh, Mr. Kayleen said about appreciation for all of the hard work that has gone into creating this budget. Um, and especially, you didn't feel great. It, did, it looked to me like you didn't feel great last month, last meeting, presenting us a budget that wasn't balanced and needing to look at some costs. How are you feeling about this budget that you're presenting to us now and what the year ahead looks like for the district? I am definitely not jumping for joy. Uh, I, I 
think this budget is is tight. Uh, I, I think our staff. I've been here since 2014. Um, not gonna look, we've been very fortunate not to have a budget where we have to keep cutting people. Uh, I've been in districts where that was the norm. Uh, I've not experienced that here at Smith. So with that said, I feel we are lucky that we have a budget, hopefully being passed this evening, where that's not happening. Uh, but you're going to talk about instructional supplies. I do worry about instructional supplies. I want to make sure that the, the experience that our students have, there's minimal impact. And there may be an impact. Uh, but the staff in front of those students will be there. And the support staff will be here. Uh, you know, I pick up the newspaper and I read it every day, and I, my colleagues are struggling in all the districts. And uh, so I feel that we are fortunate here. However, long term, I, I will still stay in my soapbox. We talked about this before. You know, I, I don't think we are looking at a fiscal cliff. I think we're talking about a fiscal wall. I, I, I'll keep saying that. Uh, I think this is the first year where that, that wall is getting closer. You might be able to touch it now. Um, where in another year, when enrollment truly levels out at 600, um, I think as a board, you're going to have some difficult decisions to make. You know, how do we counter that? Um, you know, my, my answer is more students, uh, but where do the students go? Uh, the alternative to more students is that we talked about a basic budget. You increase your revenue or you decrease your expenses. So if we can't increase revenue, which is students, then we have to decrease expenses. How do we decrease expenses? We've decreased as many expenses as we can in this particular budget. There's not a whole lot more to shave. Uh, you begin to talk about programming, which means people, which means students. So I see that coming. Uh, and I think as a board, we have to be prepared for that and have an answer. But for this particular budget, with where we were last month and where my colleagues are within the city and other cities and towns, I think we're in a good, good position. <clears throat> I just want to make a comment that <clears throat> for anybody that read the Daily Hampshire Gazette this morning on the editorial page, there was a little block and it showed the cost of college, $90,000. That's the average for a good college today that they're using for a number. And then it went down one by one by one to become an electrician, zero, to become a plumber, zero, to become a carpenter zero, come an auto mechanic, zero. What they were showing is that the value of a vocational education to a family is starting to look a hell of a lot better than it ever did before financially. But as far as the skill set, where our students, uh, and Joe, you can back this up with me, but are leaving here with a four-year education to go to a two-year, four-year college and then go into management and have the earning power to buy a house, to buy a car, to do uh, service to the community in what they're providing. It is so valuable, but the picture, as you said, is getting clearer for families in regards to the value of our school and the value of our tech education. It's starting to be recognized more today than ever has in the past. <clears throat> so I think as far as your question about students, where do we get them, how are we going to get them, I think they're going to be a little more, uh, a little more of, a, of, a, of a value page there that these people are going to come to us. As we say, 300 apply uh, and we can only take 150. So <clears throat> in regards to the lottery system that the state talked about uh, different facets that are beyond our control. I still think that personally, that the uh, what we have here and what we visit every day here is is just people. You know, they drive by from Florence to here. If they don't see the cows in the pasture, they think there's something wrong. They don't realize we have poor pasture. But it's a matter of education that we're doing to the public of the services that we can provide in doing this with a, a balanced budget and being able to be proud of coming to work every day, I think uh, I can be proud of being aligned with Smith location. So I'll get off my soapbox. So we do have a motion to second to approve, approve the FY25 budget. Is there any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. 
You can sleep tonight. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, so we're going to go through with the rest of the agenda. Is there any participation by the public this evening? Hearing none. Participation by the trustees. Yes, I have a short report on the most recent board meeting of the Collaborative for Educational Services. The STEM paid internship program has been confirmed as funded for this year with a commitment to place 50 students and they're seeking additional funding to place another 20 to 30 students. These internships are funded through the Executive Office for Education, which is the, the governor's budget. Um, CES recently compiled data on seven years of STEM internships going all the way back to the start of 2018, not including the 50 plus students currently engaged. Workforce development pro uh, programs has placed 196 interns who earned more than $330,000 in wages and worked more than 25,000 hours of internship time. CES has engaged 61 employers in a wide range of fields, including green energy, pharmaceuticals, information technology, cardiology, chemical engineering, bioengineering, neuroscience, uh, mechatronics, artificial intelligence, and human robotics, and is looking forward to the strongest year yet in fiscal year 24. I chose that. The collaborative does a lot, but I chose this item to share with you all because of its relevance to what we do. <clears throat> Excellent. Thank you. I can give just a quick update on the building Please. committee. I know Mr. Quadro left early. Uh, <coughs> to pitch it. Just a quick update on the building committee, uh, subcommittee. Uh, we met again this afternoon. Uh, in your packet, uh, I want to thank Mr. Wilber, our OPM. Uh, he's going to begin to complete these monthly reports for the board, uh, so you can see that review at, at your leisure. Uh, but a quick, couple quick updates. Uh, last week, I met with the team from SMFA. Uh, along with uh, Dave Evans. Dave Evans works for the Department of Ed uh, in the CTE office. He is basically their uh, safety officer. So anytime a school has a new Chapter 74 program, Dave has to come out and do a safety inspection of the new shop. Anytime an existing shop does a major renovation, he has to come out and do a safety inspection. So I want to thank SMMA for sort of being proactive rather than building a building and then having Dave come out and inspect the building. Uh, nowadays, with the technology, we did a virtual walkthrough of the design uh, and allowed Dave to kind of see all the spaces, uh, see all the safety features of every uh, learning area. And the feedback was there was only one request from Dave. Uh, he wanted us to add in an additional emergency shutoff button uh, in each of the shops. We have one per shop. He wants two per shop. Fine, that's an easy fix. It's basically a, an additional light switch if you want to think about it that way. Uh, beyond that, he could not. Uh, shared up praise. He thought the building was beautifully designed. He thinks it's going to really solve all, you know, a lot of the issues that we have. He was very, very impressed. So I just want to thank everybody involved there. Uh, and again, just point out the report. I just want to, time is crunching and it is flying by. But on page two, you can sort of see the task plan for April and May. You know, we are in pace. We are out to bid currently. As of this week, we are out to bid for the general contractor and all of the subcontractors. So. Uh, the fact that that's happening now, uh, you know, life is getting real. So, anyways, I just want to share that with, with the board. Very, very exciting. And I just have a point of clarification about process. Are, is that being shared during participation by the trustees and not during the committee report? I'm sorry. I, I, well, I missed one. Oh, well, actually, I was just wondering if it was because it happened today. And so... Oh, no. It, I, I, I thought it was... Oh, okay. I remember. Well, maybe that's because it happened today, and so that's why we're hearing about it now, but it happened to be posted when we hear about committee reports. Okay, gotcha. So it can go either way. Very exciting to hear. Yes. Especially. Our next item, I have a motion to second to approve the minutes of March 26th, Board of Trustees meeting. So moved. Second. second. Okay. Additional discussion? I defer. <laughs> hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. School spotlight. I'd like to take the opportunity to invite Mr. Dave Lively uh, from our business and engineering departments. And he's going to have, have to a, switch over here. a short presentation just to kind of highlight some of the wonderful things that are happening in engineering and business. Thanks for inviting me. Engineering, it's Smith, Star, myself, Mr. Roy, <laughs> Mr. Metzel, and Mr. Savoy. These are some of the trips 
we've been on. This is Bill Harley who comes in and talks to us about how he makes lures. Kids love fishing. This is Smith's Connect. Uh, you may recognize some of these students uh, on Industrial Drive. That no longer exists. Uh, this is New England Air Museum. We go down there every year. We're going there in a couple weeks. Take the students there and Bombardier, not Bombardier, where they make and maintain planes. Uh, this is the millimeter wave place in Amherst. Uh, this is, you mentioned Chris Mason earlier, this is uh, written into the Eversource contract with the city that they have to make an engineer available to discuss solar panels and bring us around there. And this is, of course, the Holyoke Dam. We go there to check out how they make electricity and what they do with fish. All right. Uh, ninth grade engineering class. Mr. Metzl's class. IED is a prodigy the way course. It is an advanced course and coded thusly by the state. These are ninth graders. Uh, you can't really tell what's going on there, but they are designing simple machine carnival games and showing them off to each other. Very fun. What, oh, did, they, what did that mean in the top left corner? Ah, uh, unfortunately, I put this in for bat. Who did that? <laughs> I, just, I highlighted it. I said, you just write something in there. She did not get to it. <laughs> so I'm just ad libbing. I'm ad libbing. With Mad Libs. Yes, I understand. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'll play with too many of those. Or it's like you might be testing us. We'll see our recall. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's interpreted like poetry. You need to come up with Mad Libs. 10th uh, grade, I teach this course, senior students that I have this year. We did a unit on mechanics. We're getting into electricity. We're on our way to coding and robotics. This is another Project Lead the Way course. Um, yes, uh, they will also make hydrogen fuel cell cars at some point. Once we have mechanics and electrical, then we get on to that. Uh, this is actually a continuation of what's offered at the middle school. The Project Lead the Way courses that you see Mr. Demkowski and Mr. Corman. Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, ninth and tenth grade physics, top of Mr. Roy. They make some portfolios. This is a water wheel. Uh, they do something with cars. They learn about electricity. They, he doesn't have anything that mentions it right now, but they have to cover thermodynamics <laughs> and uh, communication technologies and motion and waves. Yep. Okay, back to part of Lead the Way, Digital Electronics with me again. Uh, these are students playing with an oscilloscope, watching waves be emitted. This is the foundation of digital technologies. This is like a clock, as in a clock speed of a computer. Uh, this is a power supply. We assemble and solder those. We learn how to solder it. We learn how to control circuits to make cool messages go by on this little uh, LED. Next. Okay, this is circuit design. So the other one is um, an AP level course and uh, recognized as such by the state. This is for students who are not uh, already knowledgeable about electricity and electronics. Probably they didn't take my 10th grade course. <laughs> and it gives students a lot of choice. So uh, this is an electrical student, but we also have students from animal science that just felt it might be interesting having read the course description and would like to see what we've got over in circuit design. That's student wearing three sets of goggles? Ah, well spotted. That's the Where's Waldo Easter egg. Uh, yes. <laughs> This student, one day when soldering, to see if I would notice, put on three safety goggles. It was pretty bright. Uh, we'll say, I had uh, to. Uh, yes. Give me a high march for the safety. That is the uh, quarterback of our football team. Mm -hmm. All right, next. How's the visibility through three pairs of goggles? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've never done that. Okay. Renewable energy. Oh, that was great. I used to teach this. This is. Uh, me doing uh, 
hot air balloons and solar houses with all sorts of cool stuff like a solar furnace that circulates water through it and whatnot. Now it's Mr. Savoy. Uh, he is right now, I think, doing solar cars with them. If that's not, not, if that's not obvious, these are supposed to race each other. And they're also learning mechanics, some mechanics, gear training and stuff like that. Oh, Savoy always comes with me to the um, Holyoke fish ladder, except not this year, because they have some scheduled maintenance. So maybe we're going to tour the canal. That's it. Okay, this is our fourth part of the Lead the Way course in the sequence for 12th graders, where they design and test uh, 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 in a fairly rigorous way. So it takes an entire year and we do a very in-depth version of the engineering design process where they have to flesh out the problem, do a lot of research, use a lot of skills they've acquired such as online design, 3D printing, stuff like that, print models. They design science experiments which they then test, which they find agonizing. Okay, <laughs> Oh, robotics. I, I get to teach this one, too. These are students I have this year. Um, oh, not that guy, but the other one. Uh, you see, the, the robots can look very different, but in robotics, you always have some goal, and you have to try to meet that goal with these criteria. Uh, there are very different paths you can take with the giant honking, I don't know, <laughs> amount of stuff I have that they can just comb through and make whatever they want. Okay, and they learn coding, of course. Uh, this is the other course that I offer for 12th graders. Uh, they make a few things. So they learn about fluid power and make a uh, sort of mechanical Turk that's supposed to play, play checkers or chess against another team. Uh, this, is, this is a four axis. This is a five axis because he's you know, exceptionally interested in these things. Uh, most could make a four axis one. Um, this is the student who 3D printed up a key tag, I guess. That, you know, you put a key ring on and yeah, you know that. These are the students and the first unit where we learned about industrial engineering. They make machines and a marble has to go through all of the boxes, satisfying a bunch of criteria on its way to the bottom. This is the monster truck. This is a monster truck course, it's hard to tell. But yeah, it has to go over stakes and things like that. Uh, we do roller coasters. This is to give students a little bit of a taste for energy flow equations and what it might be like if you were to pursue engineering after high school. You would certainly be learning about energy uh, as a freshman and wherever you go from here. Oh, we do planes, of course. We do planes. And so I take them to the England Air Museum as well. We fly them around in the room. It's really fun. Oh, Engineering and Games Club. Yes. So people come every Wednesday, except not this Wednesday because we have a half day. And we play various games. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I'm the co-advisor. Unofficial. It's not a stipended position. <laughs> but it's in my room. And I have a bunch of games. And we play. It's really fun. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, we've got a good number of teachers as well. It's pretty cool. All right. I have 80 more slides, so. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Sounds like your dream job. I do enjoy it. Thank you, Yes. for continuing to avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Are the, um, the project lead the way teachers have to go through a special training? Oh my. Yes, they do. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. It takes about two weeks. You have to screw your web report. I have purpose. Uh, it's usually in, oh, usually in Hawaii. Um, no. <laughs> no. But sometimes you get to go to WPI or RIT or LA or do it online. And you can actually get four credits for master's degree level credits from RIT for those courses, which is pretty cool. So I got to my master's plus 30, hanging out a bunch of those. 
it's a pretty high. It's a oh, it's really hard. Rigorous, and oh. it means that oh, teachers my. are really well qualified to. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they don't, more. they don't slap on that name. They don't and it's like the teachers are. It takes a lot of time and effort invested by an individual to go through this process. It's only done in the summer by people who are not crazy. Or you take two weeks off of school and go, I got to do that one year too. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, really? Um, it's sixth grade. Yeah. 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 The science yeah. 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 So, we have your report. Okay. We do have that. Yes, good evening, everybody. Uh, oh. Enrollment is holding steady at 573. You can see the applications that we have through the uh, March 15th application season this year. So, that's my official. Uh, number that we have right now, 343, so that's a plus 23. Uh, amount of the applications for Northampton has risen year over year. Uh, so we have created all the applicants at this point, and letters will be sent out uh, this Friday for the top 150, and letters will be sent out for the remaining students notifying them um, of their status and wait list. Personnel, we posted for collision repair instructor, that's due to a Retirement and posted for the ELA teacher. That's the official uh, hiring of that position for the instructor that we lost in mid year. Graduation prep, we sent out information. We'll do the senior salutes again this year. That information went out this afternoon. Uh, Alicia Carter is going to uh, continue to produce the actual template creation, the digital creation that will go out via social media and email uh, throughout to all our community members. And that will start on May 1st. Uh, and I'll be sending out information around the senior events this week. So. Wow, how'd that happen? Yeah, we're there already. So, mm -hmm. if any of your questions, that's my brief report. Thank you, sir. Any reports? I already misspoke already. No. <laughs> just, uh, just <laughs> you, you I, don't know that. Truly, it was clarification. I thought that that's what I, I hope you appreciate that. Okay, I have a policy, subcommittee report. Um, we met on April 5th. Uh, we reviewed Ms. Vance Hodgson's final draft of an updated district policy regarding the um, maintenance of acquisition and maintenance of library materials. We will bring that policy to you for your review and a possible vote at next month's meeting. We had a thorough discussion, I would say it was a thorough discussion, certainly lively, um, about giving employees the opportunity to donate unused sick days to the sick leave bank when they retire, um, if they have days beyond those uh, that are bought back. Uh, we requested data from Ms. Fairman about the actual number of days that would have been available for this transfer in the past five years, and we'll continue the discussion at our next policy subcommittee meeting. So the next under new business May I have a motion a second to approve an out-of-country field trip all the way to Italy, date to be determined in 2025? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> 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 May I have a motion a second to approve the following surplus from automotive for the resale a Sun Electric Multi-Channel Scope LS2000 Automotive Oscilloscope and Beer's Scan Tool. So moved. Second. Additional discussion, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Future business, May 21st, regular Board of Trustees meeting here at 5 o'clock. June 11th, regular Board of Trustees meeting here. Five o'clock in your trustees meeting schedule and packet for the FY25. And then for you, your official duty. Okay. Uh, I make a motion that we adjourn. All in favor? Second. <laughs> Thank you, everybody.